Hey y'all, it's Cherokee Starfish, and uh, hopefully everyone has audio from my mic now following that Windows 10 system update, because you know how we love those. And in defiance of everything Microsoft is trying to do to screw us over, I am back with more Betrayal in Antara. So welcome back to Chapter 8. And uh, we're going to go straight into it because we checked out these shops and things last time, but we didn't get to explore the rest of the town. So we're going to dodge straight into that. Oh, is it not morning? Let me run around in a circle here. Become morning. Morning. Is it morning now? Yes. I love how you can make time pass by just spinning in circles. The Mantigua Holding Company, huh? Okay, it's a bank. The bank manager kept the party waiting for quite a few minutes. Finally, they were ushered into his office. William decided to take the upper hand right away. Grasping the manager's fish-like hand, he identified himself as Lord Escobar's son. The title got the man's attention. He fawned, And what can I do for you, Master Escobar? As one of the foremost citizens of Havsley, you are no doubt aware of the upcoming marriage between myself and Solana Sheffield. The manager preened under the flattery and tried to look like the news was indeed already known to him. Yes, most certainly, of course, my sincerest congratulations. William strove to look as official as possible. Thank you. Now, if you'll permit me, I have business with you. I'm interested, uh, rather... My father is interested in knowing the current financial state of his future in-laws. As you must realize, my father is quite a wealthy, powerful man. He does not want to conjoin the two families unless the match will prove beneficial to both sides. I hasten to assure you, my father's bank is providing the same courtesy to Lord Sheffield. The bank manager simpered. I understand completely. Lord Sheffield has two accounts with us. Here are the records for each. Well, that didn't take much deception at all, did it? Wow. Hmm. The manager opened a heavy ledger, indicating several pages of tabulated figures. Lord Sheffield handles this account personally, has done so for years. Uh, the second, more recent account was handled strictly by courier. Come to think of it, I don't believe the Lord's ever mentioned this account at all. Perhaps I should say something the next time. No, perhaps not. I'm sure Lord Sheffield has his reasons. William perused the numbers for both accounts, then closed the ledger. I've seen enough. I'll be sure to tell my father you've been most attentive. The banker dry-washed his hands. Oh, thank you, my lord. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Hmm... Interesting, and I wonder why it's relevant. So, y'all may remember from uh, earlier episodes that uh, Lord Sheffield, of course, is the provincial governor of Genoli, which is the part of the empire that we are currently in. And yes, even though he doesn't really want to, and she doesn't either, William is set to marry his daughter. We met him back in Chapter 3, I think, and uh, that was when we were in Tikoro for the first time. So, yeah, she was rather an unpleasant character, although her father seemed nice enough. But it's, uh, it's a little strange that he has an account that has never been mentioned that maybe he doesn't know about that's handled only by Messenger? Hmm, interesting. Taylor appeared from the back of his shop. Ooh, Taylor shop. Seeing three travel-stained stra uh, travel strangers say that three times fast. He began to say, I'm sorry, the shop is closed. But then he narrowed his eyes and came closer. Fingering William's collar and eyeing his boots, he murmured, Panizzo broadcloth, finest weave, imported leather boots from Chale? Hmm. And William disentangled himself. We're uh, not from around here. I am, the tailor interrupted, a noble. Yes, that's plain to see. Why you should appear in such a condition is beyond me. But I'll take care of that, my lord. Just put yourself in my hands. It'll be such a pleasure to serve you as opposed to my last client. Kalen teased. Don't tell me his clothes were even more ragged than William's. No, frankly they weren't. 
But his manner, ugh, so demanding, so uncouth. His clothes reeked of the sea, but he certainly wasn't with the military. Kalen was interested. A traitor? The tailor snorted. With the strike, there's little chance of that. At least, not the legitimate sort, if you catch my meaning. Still, he had a letter of credit signed by Lord Sheffield himself. Who am I to turn my back on that? Hmm. Did he now? And the tailor started to remove William's garments, and William hurriedly gathered his ragged clothes around him, saying, uh, I'm sorry, but we're in a bit of a rush. Uh, perhaps some other time. <laughs> the tailor shrugged as if to say, Can I help it if you go out in public looking like that? You meet a strange man who just starts to undress you. <laughs> and William's like, uh, rain check. I'm surprised Aaron didn't have anything to say. Oh, okay, and this is an empty cabin, which uh, some of y'all pointed out can be useful for storing items. Because much like treasure chests, uh, these do not clear their inventory or respawn or what have you when there is like a chapter transition. Which, that's great, the only problem with it, in case you're using this as a walkthrough, uh, is that you can't always guarantee, like, when you're going to have or lose that access to a house. So, we don't know when the chapter transition will come that may deny us access back into this part of the Empire, and we could never come back here. But... For now, at least, I'm going to leave those four bowstrings because we have, like, seven on us. And, of course, we're not using them that much because we're not shooting our bows. So, they are valuable items and I don't want to, to waste them. Ooh, a treasure chest. Okay. Let's see what's in this house first, though. Hmm. A sign on the door read, Bach, Lighthouse Keeper. The door opened a crack. An eye peered out, looking them up and down suspiciously. William quickly blurted, uh, How's the lighthouse? The door opened a little wider, revealing a scrawny man with a hangdog expression. My grandfather used to be the lighthouse keeper. What's it to you? William asked, Why isn't the lighthouse in use anymore? Hasn't been operational for years, the man said bitterly. Tides changed. Shipping lanes, too. Do you ever go out there? The man rubbed his nose. To the lighthouse? Nah. Too many memories. I spent a lot of time there when I was a boy listening to my grandpa's stories of the good old days. It must have been a great place to play, Aaron said, sensing the man's nostalgia for a happier time. Aye, it was. I used to pretend I was a pirate, before we were plagued by the real thing, that is. I'd sneak up the beach and come in by way of a secret entrance near the stairs. Hidden behind some boulders it was, so no one would see it if they didn't know it was there. Well, maybe someday the tides will turn and the lighthouse will be needed again, Aaron offered hopefully. Hmm. Sure, I'll go to my grave before that happens. Sadly, the man closed the door. Hmm. A secret entrance to the lighthouse, you say? So, this must be the lighthouse up here, I'm guessing. So if we go up the beach and behind some boulders, we can get inside. Huh. Huh. Hmm. Can we? And yeah, that is the lighthouse. Cool. Okay, this is... Is this the front? Here we go. Ooh. A bead puzzle chest. Okay. Oh boy, you know we love these. Okay. Let me think for a minute. We've got... Orange, blue, white, red, green, yellow. We need two red and an orange. Okay. Blue, blue, white, white. Uh, these always take some brain power. trying to calculate ahead, like, two 
losing a mind. We can get an orange. Uh... We need a green to get any red. Well, no, because one blue would get us a red and a white. So... Okay, so if I do that... Okay. Now with that red, I could get a blue, a white, and a green, or I could drop the other blue and get a yellow and an orange. Let me let me do that. Because I think what I need to do is if I do an orange and a white, I'll get a yellow and a green. Okay, yes. Because then... Okay, I think I see this. Yeah, because if I drop two yellows, we're going to get this. And then a white and a red will give us a blue back. And then if we drop... Yeah, the blue, the white... And the green, that'll give us a red. There we go. Ha <laughs> ha! Nailed it. Okay, so seven rations. That's cool. I'm just glad we have room for all these rations, considering how much money we're carrying. Oh, no, 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 no. And what's this? Carluda's chain. Two of them. Well, there's one. Will it stack? If so... What am I using for brains? I don't know. What are the developers using for brains that you can't stack these? <sighs> I'm gonna take it, though. Okay. Let's see. We have... Let's see, we came up that way, so we haven't been to this house. Ooh. A middle-aged woman in plain clothes came to the door. Yes? What is it? Can I assist you? William detected a slight accent. You're Chaelin, aren't you? The woman lowered her gaze. Yes, I'm from Chael, she admitted softly. Have you lived in Havsley for a long time? Yes, for many years. Now if there's nothing else... She turned as if to close the door. William tried to prolong the conversation. It's, uh, very beautiful in Chale. The woman smiled sadly. Yes, it is lovely. This is the time of year when the Callywood is in bloom. Its blossoms glow like candle flames in the evening. I'd like to see them some day. Why did you come to Havsley? The woman sighed, but did not answer. William... Kaelin put in tartly. Did you ever consider that perhaps people don't appreciate a total stranger prying into their personal lives? The woman looked up, surprised. Oh, your name is William. That was... is... the name of my son. He must be around your age now, too. Gently, Kaelin asked, Your son doesn't live with you? No. He is... With his father, who can better afford to support and educate him. I hope. Her words trailed off into another sigh. William turned away. I'm sorry if we've bothered you. To his companions, he added, We should start thinking about paying a visit to my future father-in-law, Lord Sheffield. Hmm, I wonder if that's what the castle is here, because I don't know if we were ever... We probably were, at some point, told what the capital of Genuli is, and it might be Havsley. But I'm not sure. But that would explain the big castle over there. Hmm. And it would explain why there's, like, an important bank here that handles Lord Sheffield's accounts. The Chalin woman set her hand on William's sleeve. You are to be Lord Sheffield's son-in-law. He's a good man. Man of honor. Turning back, William asked, Do you know him? Yes. 
I owe him my life. The woman told them her story in a quiet, hesitating voice. My husband is from a wealthy, influential family in Chale. He was young when I married him. Overwhelmed, such a man loved a simple country girl like me. Tears formed in the woman's eyes. I soon found out that beneath the refined exterior, he was a cruel, violent husband, though a kind and benevolent father. Soon after our son was born, I began to fear for my life. One night I ran away, though it broke my heart to leave my son. I crossed the border and made my way to Havesley. My husband followed. I pleaded with Lord Sheffield for asylum, and he hid me until my husband returned to jail. Is that why you live here in the village? Kaelin asked. Yes. Not only is it safer to stay out of notice, but the simple, gentle life appeals to me after the harsh, superficial ways of the Chalin court. And your husband doesn't know where you are? No, though he found out Lord Sheffield was instrumental in my escape. I fear the Lord has suffered for his charity. My husband is sure to have used his connections to sever Sheffield's supply lines and contracts. Kalen took the woman's hand. Have no fear on our account, ma'am. We'll keep your secret. You are friends of Lord Sheffield, the woman replied. You have my trust. Hmm. Okay, and thank you, yes. That makes a lot more sense now to, uh, to know that that is Lord Sheffield's castle. Hmm. Okay, so a story is kind of coming together here. Lord Sheffield seems to be a pretty good guy, but we knew that Janouli is uh, either not doing well or is about to start doing poorly. Because also, remember that Lord, um, what was his name, Cavendish? Covington? Anyway, the loser who is governor of Tikor, uh, the one who accused us of kidnapping the consort because he doesn't like William's dad. Um, he apparently got hold of some salt, I think it was, which is like where Lord Sheffield's family's money comes from and why they're so influential here in Genuli. Like, that's most of their power is the salt mines. So he was going to... Yes, Caverton. Thank you. Caverton. Um, he was going to basically cut Sheffield's legs out from under him by uh, supplying salt from Tikor. Or from somewhere else, anyway. Okay, another empty castle. Or castle. Cabin. Hmm. This is actually tempting. Because, of course, this is the one that has a big bonus to damage, but no bonus to accuracy. Whereas the Grulf Bow is the one that has a huge accuracy mod, but a low damage mod. As her, If her archery skill, if we'd gotten it a little bit higher, I would be tempted. Uh, but I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to mark this like we did the other one. If I can type... There we go. That's a little bit better than my first try. Okay, so... William did say we probably should go pay a visit to Lord Sheffield. I don't want to head straight there, though. At the very least, I want to, uh... Have a look around. Yeah, I think somebody mentioned that there was a bow coming up, actually, in the last stream. Ooh, Carnes and a cave, a cave. No, okay, hmm. We'll have to keep an eye out for that then, because we definitely want to give that to, uh, to Kaylin. Yeah, I remember having this conversation, I think, because it's like, if, uh, if our boy William here is going to get the good sword, it's only fair that Kaelin gets the good bow. Speaking of which... 
Let's up that archery skill a little bit. Let's see. How about... A lava sphere. Come on. Ah, oh, Of course. Of course. Okay, well. That's fine. This is a surprise round anyway. I'm hoping we can maybe take one of them down. There we go. It's not a lot of stamina if he doesn't hit. There we go. I could see the animation, like the angle of it was a little bit different, so... Let's go ahead and... Oh, he's going to go all the way around, is he? Okay. Sure. Hmm. You know what? There we go. Hey, she got one. And let's go ahead and continue boosting his spell accuracy as much as possible. Because at this point, that is the skill that I really want to go up for him. And I do want her archery to increase, but... Like, her melee is pretty solid. It needs to go up, too. Uh, just because she gets so many more turns than William. Um, I'm almost tempted, like, if her melee was higher, I might give her Everedge. But, frankly... Yeah, that, firing two arrows seems like it would be... A big, big bonus. Okay... There we go. Let's... A locked normal chest. Okay. Hey! Our good luck charm activated. That oh. doesn't... No, we need this. There we go. Okay. Yeah, archery is kind of like um, spell accuracy, where it can be difficult at some points to increase it, but man, if you hit with arrows, they really do add up. Ooh. Oh, wow. Does anybody have any Steadfast Tonic that that would stack with? Let's see. I'll give him five. Okay, so what we have here, we've got some Malkir Serum, which we're not going to use. Some Shadow Milk, which is... Like, that's not bad. That increases uh, your stealth skill temporarily. Um, more Steadfast Tonic. We're going to give her at least two. That'll complete that. But most importantly, check this out. Another Winter Staff, because unfortunately, the one that we got from that Mage in the Swamps a few episodes ago, back up in Gone, uh, we had to... Um, leave that one lying on the ground because we had nowhere we could sell it so you know uh and this one i really don't know what we would do with it either i mean it's the same stats as the kinetic staff basically uh but it would be plus 10 to cold magic oh good that went up whereas right now we have 10 to electricity Hmm. You know... I... I don't know. I don't think I'm going to change it out right now. But I do know that having up 10 to electricity doesn't really do anything. Because the electricity spells, they pretty much just hit... And they deal a static, haha, uh, amount of damage. Whereas 10 bonus points to cold might actually affect things like cold cut and deep freeze. Hmm. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to mark this as not empty. And we will perhaps come back for it. Now, 
let's see. Did anybody? I don't think anyone got hit, did they? Man, we really need a whetstone. Her magic sword is doing us no good like I this. I promised the Emperor I'd help save his daughter, and I intend to keep that promise. That means staying in Genuli until we get some answers. Oh. Huh. Where does that go, then? Uh, okay, well... Hmm... I have no idea what that is, but I guess it leaves Genuli. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. There must be plot in that hole. It's a plot hole. Okay, there's fence around the lighthouse here. We have like two fish. I'm just going to sleep until dawn. There we go. That way it doesn't, uh... Hmm. That way we're not wasting the fish. It won't go bad. I thought that there was supposed to be a secret entrance. Up the beach, hidden behind some boulders. That is what was said. But the fence goes all the way to the water, so we can't get up behind these the, the stairs here. So I'm guessing that maybe this will be gone later. Like we might need to go into the lighthouse or something, and this gate will disappear, and we will go through and, and go to the entrance that way, perhaps? Hmm. Okay, well, all signs are pointing to the castle for now. Alright. Let's see what they have to say here at Lord Sheffield's place. Nothing. Okay, that looks like the man himself, but... You know that we've got to explore before we speak to him. Just in case there is something of interest here. Nothing on this side. Oh, it's going to be like back in Tikor, isn't it? In order to get to that other side, instead of there being like a lintel across... Ooh, hey! Yeah, there's no lintel across the... Um, the gatehouse... So you have to go all the way around to get to the other side. Okay, I'm going to trust this. Come on, William. There we go. I knew he could do it. Cool, okay. Well, here's another Onyx Blade, if we need one. Some Montari Chainmail. And a Tower Shield. Which, that's the real find, isn't it? It's only at 80%, but it's free. We could buy one that would be at 100% condition down at the weapon shop and armor shop in town, or I guess it's just a shield shop, I don't know. Um, but we love a free shield. Okay, this is also not empty. If we can't find a whetstone uh, before too much longer, then uh, we may need to come back for that sword because since it's at 100%, if hers gets too damaged, it's going to start dealing a lot less damage and uh, William's not going to be able to repair it effectively. But we could take this one and just go to that temple of core that we found in the last stream and get it blessed and it would be the same as this one uh honestly that's 
That's mildly irritating. I wish I had known that we were going to find that for free, because buying one took well over a thousand burlas, and then blessing it took another, like, 250 or 300 on top of that. Can we camp here? Sure. Let's... Okay, now can we get down from here on this side? No, we must go all the way around. Because there's only one set of stairs. Because that's how castles work. Instead of WTF ar dungeon architecture. We have clipping textures. Hmm. We have WTF castle architecture. Well. Lord Sheffield... Hello. William, my boy. What tidy? It's been a while. Hmm. Okay. So he still has the original conversation options from when we met him like five chapters ago. But he also has this new one. Have you heard about the attack on Aurora and the Imperial Consort? Yes, just. It's shocking. I'm absolutely stunned. Why would anyone want to hurt her? The Wraith's attack was intended for the Emperor, but Aurora got in the way. Oh my gods! Is the Emperor all right? As all right as he can be, given the grievous circumstances. That's a relief. At a time like this, losing the Emperor would throw everything into turmoil and chaos. Hmm, you don't say. Who would want that? And that's all that he has to say. Okay. Well, Lord Sheffield, I really should be going. I'll tell Solana you're in town. Now don't be a stranger, boy. Hmm. I would like to go inside, please. Hmm. Okay, well, I thought that we would get a little more information than that. But... I mean, that's okay. I thought... Is this not the town with two shops? Maybe it's somewhere else. I feel like we need to do something here. We may just have a few questions. Like, if we gave him something, then... We can probably ditch that. We could probably ditch both of those. Uh, hmm. I'm not sure what we would give him is the problem. This is our insurance policy, but... Yeah, we don't have anything obvious to show him, so... Maybe something will come up. In the meantime, though, here is something that I've been needing to do that I haven't. So, uh, this right here, Swamp Survival Skills, right? We kept that because both of our boys here got to use that book, but Kaylin did not. <laughs> There we go. That gives her plus five to her stealth, which is great, because uh, her stealth is now 63 with the bonus. And look at them. Both of them are at 100 plus. Or can be, you know, with the, like, shadow rings on. But see, 82, 81. Okay, so... Let's store this here. We don't need it anymore. Likewise, we have this, which she got to use, and they didn't. And this... There we go. Plus three scouting. Plus three melee. And plus three to stealth. Why are you fatigued? Here we go. 
See? Watch. This is a really good book. Because it levels up three skills at once. So that's pretty cool. Alright, and this is the note that we got from... She did to my cousin and so many others until there are none left to feed her. This note is still suspicious, but we've been carrying this since we found the fire staff in that barn, which is back in, like, Chapter 2, and it hasn't come up yet. On the one hand, given the situation, I'm loath to part with it because it sounds very suspicious, but also I don't know what the note could possibly do. But then we have, like, the insurance policy where random stuff happened, like, you know, we got enchanted by the prophet and began to glow... But, I don't, you can only carry so much stuff. So I feel like it's probably time to put this away. We're not going to be going to Berlin again, I don't think, in this chapter. And if we do go somewhere else, there are places we can buy Academy Passes. And we even have a couple stashed in treasure chests. So if we wind up back in that province... Likewise, these notes here. We do not really need those. There we go. That gives us quite a bit more room. Okay, let's rest and... Oops. And then we will head out. Ugh. There. Okay. Touch and detect went up. Strength, poison, and magic. This is the one that I really want to go up, followed by strength. I mean... Whoops. Don't want to untick it. Detect is important also. Touch, I'm... Eh. I'm less interested in. But I still want to see what's kind of behind all of these different paywalls. But magic is the big one because it's just kind of generic, arcane energy or whatever and then likewise strength is buffs so nothing yet but we'll be we'll be keeping an eye on it okay back along the coast here and let's see what's down south Okay, there's enemies that we've already killed. Okay, so here we go. New road. From here on on out, we are back in uncharted territory. I mean, we already were, but still. Oop. Okay. Can we get the jump on these guys? Come on, game. Oh, really? Okay. Fine. Mercenary Archer. Mercenary. Mercenary Archer. Mercenary. Well, let's go ahead and lock down this Archer. We're going to throw on an Armor Light. Because we know better. That's the other archer. Okay. You keep these guys off of Aaron. And... Let's see, we don't need line of sight to cast this spell, so we'll put that on the other archer over there. I'm almost a little excited that she took damage. Like, I don't want her to take a lot of damage, um, but that means that William can repair her armor, which is great. You know what? Even though he has a really awesome sword and his melee skill is higher, 
We've not gotten to cast this on Kayla yet. And since she gets more turns than William does, I bet the adrenaline spell really makes her a beast if she's got a decent sword. Man, apparently they need it because these guys have a load of hit points. Thankfully, they're not dealing a lot of damage back. Because, of course, we have that Montari plate. And it is more than just a pretty set of armor. It is very functional. Can we get up there to that guy? No, unfortunately not. And we can't shoot him because we're threatened. Dang it. Oh man, I don't want to... I don't want him to get away. Can we... Mm. Dang it. Can we cast something else, perhaps? We could cast Lightning Storm, but it's not guaranteed to hit him. Uh, line of sight, line of sight, line of sight. Hmm. This one doesn't necessarily need line of sight. Dang it. Okay, we do have line of sight to that guy. Okay, so maybe if we hit him with a lava sphere, we can get that dude. If that's the case, I'm going to drink an Abrita's Conduit, because that'll up his spell accuracy by 30 points. Alright. Let's do a big hit. There we go. Boom. Oh my god. You're joking. Oh, that's my fault. I should have drunk sun water first. Because we're at the point in the game where um, enemy archers are consistently carrying um, arrows that deal energy damage. And they've been doing that. They've been hitting Aaron and William uh, and getting through the armor light spells by using the corrosive arrows and like the, the flaming arrows. And I know that, so that's really my own fault. Dang, we were doing so well. But can't have Aaron go down like that. We can't have any of them go down like that. I wish it was just a case of like, you know, the way that it works in Disciples 2 on the Thursday streams, where if someone dies in combat, they just don't get experience points. But... That incapacitated status is untenable. Okay. Let's do it right this time. First things first, that's gonna be the same. And we're already better off because she got a hit. Actually, you know what? Here's what I should do. Look how they're clustered up. While he's got full health... There we go. Perfect. Perfect. This guy should go down a treat because he got hit for 75 damage. Okay, now we will put armor light on. Uh, yeah, that's the way to go. I was going to see if I could get off another lava sphere, but... 
So I need to protect him from that. That way, at least, he's only taking the energy damage. Now, William, take him down. There we go. That way, the field is a little bit clearer, that much quicker. Man, him and that shield. Okay. Got 17 stamina. not hit Kaelin. So the difference between Fireball and Lava Sphere and the reason that they have two different spells is Lava Sphere, the Fireball, first of all, it caps out a little bit lower. 20 stamina for 60 points of damage. Lava Sphere works off of the same, like, damage algorithm, I guess, where it deals less damage the further the target is away from the epicenter. But, see, it's two points of damage per stamina. So for 30 stamina, 75. If we spend 20, it only deals 50. So Lava Sphere can peak higher than Fireball, but you have to spend more stamina to get there because at the same expenditure, it deals less damage. And the reason why is because it... Uh, inflicts that damage over time. Okay. Can we get to that guy? No. Let's go finish this guy off then. Really, William? Oh, I should have shot him with Kaelin. Uh, okay. I'm going to take a chance. There we go. Good. I figured if he went down, then it's okay that he's got low stamina or low health, because that's the archer. Okay, let's take this guy off Aaron. And Kaelin, honestly, you're doing more damage with your bow than you are with your sword, so just shoot him. And let's see. Uh... Let's do some webs to stop that guy. There we go, now he can't get away. Come on back to Kaylin's turn. Give him another shot, girl. There we go. Now we need to get this guy down and take care of him because Aaron's armor light spell is going to wear off. Oh, see, there it goes. Ooh, we can't shoot him. Okay, we can barely get around this way. But Aaron should go first before that guy does. So we will leave. Come all the way over here. That guy's just going to defend, I guess. And much good may it do him. Nice. Nice. There we go. That was a much better version of that fight. Hey, her archery went up. Cool. His spell accuracy increased. Detect electricity area damage, self and ally. <laughs> yeah, I would imagine that all this stuff would go up. Ooh, look at that. Ooh, okay. Whetstone's the most important thing. That is the most important thing. Bread. Chicken. Mm, now I kind of want a chicken sandwich. Okay, let's see. We are going to swap swords. 
There we go. Back up to 78. Nice. Okay. Man, they had a bunch of stuff on them. I'm hoping we're approaching the point in the game where, like, it doesn't really matter if we have a lot of cash, so... Okay, uh... Probably can't do anything with Aaron's armor. Yeah. Kalen, though. There we go. Nice. Phew-wee. Okay, now we really need to rest. Is there another battle down there already? Hmm. Well, here. Aaron, before you take a nap. What do you... What? What do you mean this doesn't seem like a good place to dig? It's... Literally, okay, well, to be fair, I can't interact with it, so. Maybe it's plot-based? Uh, I don't know what that means. Hmm. Odd. Let's take this opportunity to rest like a mofo. Because we do not want Aaron at low health when we run into our next encounter, which is an inevitability. I'm just trying to keep an eye out ahead, and y'all help me watch too. Those are, are those Karns or Firewolves? I think they're Karns. Yes, surprise them. Yes, good. Excellent. Okay. Archery practice. Archery practice for everybody. Love it. Oh, dang it. Well, we might still take one down. If William can hit with this second shot. Okay, well. In that case, I guess it doesn't matter if you're going to come that close. Oh, really? Well, where are we supposed to go? Okay, they're like the field worms where they have a really weird zone of control and you can't, like, walk into it. I guess. Okay, let's do Adrenaline on Kalen. William obviously does not need it. Because he hit that dog for like 80 some damage. There we go. Two shots, one kill. Could be worse, I guess. 75, not bad. As long as they can handle the melee. I'm going to spam, like, actual attack roll spells with Aaron in order to try and get that uh, spell accuracy stat up. Hmm, melee 60. Ooh, nice hit, Aaron. Proud of you. Hmm. They're not carrying anything. How rude, honestly. Oop, more of them. Okay, well. 
Nothing? Back up to 100%. Good. Hers is at 98. So maybe we can do hers also? Yep. And... We can do her sword again as well. We lost 3% on that battle. What do we get back? Oh, good job, William. I almost feel like it's a good idea to give her Ever Edge because he's gonna he might do better with the Onyx Blade because his melee skill is higher, so its lower stats will kind of even out for him, whereas the bonus to hit for Kaylin on Ever Edge would be better. But also, she hits more often than him, which means that her weapon will degrade faster. Maybe that's actually the way to go. I'm gonna try that. I'm gonna swap them out and let him keep the Onyx Blade. That also makes sense because he's gonna be the one carrying the Whetstones anyway. So, like, you know. Hmm. Oh, yeah, we can actually see them, so let me back up a few feet. Okay, stealthily, stealthily get right up in their faces and surprise them. Haha. <laughs> okay. This verse, same as the first. I could use a fireball or a lava sphere here, but since the rest of the party has got this situation pretty much locked down and it's not necessary to dish out massive amounts of damage, um, I'm not going to worry too much about it. It will actually reduce the number of shots that Aaron gets to take because he's killing them faster and I would rather get off like three hotfoot spells in place of one lava sphere. Especially since if we're going for damage then you're talking about a larger stamina expenditure anyway, so. Okay, 50 damage. Now, Kaylin, let's see what you do with Everedge. 64. Okay, so that really brought her damage up. Meanwhile, his did, like, it did drop significantly, but not enough to be concerning. So I think that might be the right decision. And then if her melee skill catches up with his, we can always trade back. But actually, I, th I think that might be the place that Everedge needs to be is with Kaylin anyway. And the real reason just simply is because she hits more often. So that way, if he's got the Onyx Blade, we are doing less weapon maintenance. And we will go through whetstones more slowly. Which is especially great when we're in a situation like we are right now, where we don't have any, and we don't know where to get some. That's our girl. Small quality of life suggestion in case there is ever a remake. I feel like Antara could benefit from um, a quick spell slot or button like Might and Magic 6 and 7 have, where you could set a specific spell to a hotkey, and then you wouldn't have to go into your spell book to cast it over and over. So that way, if we want to cast lots of hotfoot spells, we just can. Okay, do Molly. What are we going to find here? A treasure chest, mayhap? Perhaps? No, not over here at least. Okay. 
I'm not going to fast travel, but let's see what our options are. Balooker. And that's it. Fair enough. Anything good over here? Ever since for that one quest, way down in, where was it? I think it was Sortiga, where we had to dig the wedding rings up out of the sand. That is literally the only time we've ever found a dig spot on the beach. Uh, but I have to check every time we come to a new stretch of beach, because otherwise, I'm worried we'll miss something. Okay, well, let's just start here and go clockwise. Oh, whoa, hello. Okay. Three Traka messengers stood at a bar sipping fermented nectar from long, thin glasses. Aaron walked up to them and greeted them courteously. Always eager to chat, the Traka invited him and his friends to join them. Mm, what, uh, say we exchange stories, suggested one Traka with bright blue and yellow feathers. This one, I presume. This gives you a much better look at what the Traka are, and you can see that they do have, like, opposable thumbs and working hands on their wings. Uh, because the few Traka that we have gotten to actually see up to this point in the game, we have seen them dead on like this from the front. So... Yeah, they're pretty cool, and they seem to be important to the game and to the setting, where they work as couriers and stuff, so I want to know more about them. And we know much less about them than the Grulf, and we've gotten to see less of them as well. So this is nice, seeing them in profile, you get to see a bit more of, of what they actually look like, their body shape, and, and the differences between them. Well, let's swap some stories then. You go first, said a slender Traka with green feathers. Aaron drew a deep breath and began. Now, I'm sure you've heard about the tragedy at the Imperial Palace not too long ago. A terrible fiend was trapped inside the consort's body in an attempt to assassinate the Emperor himself. But we three were actually there when the wraith came out of the consort. The Traka clicked and chirped excitedly. Aaron waved for silence. I was one of the closest to him. I saw the creature rise up out of the consort's mouth. Using my magic powers, I wrestled with the wraith, trying to subdue it before it could do any more damage. Kaelin commented to William, Is this the same innocent, truthful boy I left in your care not so very long ago? <laughs> what have you done to him? William shrugged. Aaron continued, Alas, my powers were not yet strong enough. Uh, the wraith knocked me to the ground and went straight for the Emperor. Sadly, the Princess Aurora was in the way. She was stricken, her body falling beside that of the consort. The Traka rattled their beaks, all talking at once. Oh, hmm, too sad, too terrible. How awful for you, for the Princess, oh, for the consort. Finally, they quieted down and the green plumage Traka offered her tale. I saw something just last week, near the river southeast of Breland. A human struck another, struck him dead. Then he took something big and shiny from the body. He loaded it onto a rowboat. Then he went back to see if there was anything left to plunder. Suddenly, the Traka paused for dramatic effect. Mm, yeah, Festival of Liars, indeed. That kind of is what it reminds me of. Mm, there was a rumble in the distance. The rumble got louder and the ground started to shake. Oh, and the man realized what was happening. And he ran toward the boat for safety. But too late, too late. Oh, the herd of stampeding Karn caught him up and trampled him. I was curious about what he had taken off the corpse, but by the time I finished my delivery and came back, the rowboat was gone. I think maybe it sank. What do you make of that? Oh no. Please tell me I'm wrong. 
If there's a sunken rowboat that has a really cool treasure on it and the only way to dredge it up is by using a fishing pole and the foraging skill, I'm gonna lose my mind. Because that skill has been useless this entire game. The game will barely even let you use it. Like, there are all these places where you would think it would apply, and it's just like, oh, no, this is not a great spot for fishing or gathering berries or literally doing anything at all. So, like, we haven't been able to raise foraging, and, well, I'm getting ahead of myself. That might not be what it is, but I just, I feel like I can smell that coming. Aaron puzzled over the Tracaz story. Hmm, can't really say I know what to make of it other than the murderer got what he deserved and then some. William? I wonder what the big shiny thing was. It's always interesting to find out what's worth a man's life. You know, fair enough. Fair enough. And, oh... No, don't tell me that. Do not tell me I'm right. I will be so mad at this game. Oh, man. Where would that even be? I don't... Mm, 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 I don't like that. I don't like that. As the party approached the open door, two burly men came out carrying a wrought iron bedstead. A plump woman followed, scolding them. Now you take care of that bed, do you hear? It's been in the family for years. The movers grunted and took special pains to walk across the flower beds. Oh, wow, rude. Looks like you're moving, William said politely. Yes, and a few words with my husband. Make them quick, because he has far too many important things to do to waste the day on business. Okay, well, at least I think we've got fishing poles, so. The companions entered the house. In and amongst the boxes and packing crates, they came across a man wrapping candlesticks in an old tablecloth. Leaving Dumali? William asked. Yep, moving closer to Takoro. I'm Guildmaster of the Salt Miners. I thought a lot of salt went through this area, Havsley in particular. Not so much anymore. Calverton's contracts pay the miners more than Sheffield's do. Sheffield's been able to hold on to fewer and fewer men. With business slacking off here and picking up in t -Corps, I've got to be where the miners need me the most, and since Lord Calverton's providing the wagons for my move, well, you see how it is. William's voice was harsh. Yes. I see exactly how it is. Mmm, capitalism strikes again. Okay, I've ignored this long enough. I need to see if there is something in here. Hey! It's actually a dig spot this time. And I'm going to go ahead and take these bowstrings because I am deliberately trying my best to raise the archery skill. So, if we keep running into those Karn and we keep getting shots off at them... It's going to go up, and our bows are going to degrade, and we don't have any beeswax. So, speaking of which, actually, okay, 85, 90%. I was thinking that I probably... I'm going to let it get to around 80 or 75% and see, because the, the accuracy and damage mod is still pretty good. So, well, we don't have any fishing poles either, I just realized. We'll have to find some, damn it. But anyway, we'll, we'll see. See how it affects Kaylin's stats, and as long as she's still hitting, I'll wait before I use a bowstring. The door was answered by a brown-skinned, desiccated man. William began to introduce himself, but stopped short, surprised to see a gray burrow standing on the hearth, as if warming his old bones by the fire. Uh, don't mind Petrush, the man said. I don't mind him. I was just wondering what a burrow is doing inside your house. Uh, just about anything he wants to. Petrush and I worked side by side in the salt mines for... Twenty years and more. They pensioned me, but they were going to turn Petrush into cat food. I bought him and brought him home. We haven't been as far north as the salt mines. What's it like up there? Uh, let me start from the beginning. 
A long time ago, something dried up an inland sea. Must have dried it up real quick, because the salt deposits aren't muddied with sediments. Oh, I like that the guy, even though he's a miner, like, or because he's a miner, um, he knows what he's talking about. And so often, because mining is like manual labor, miners are depicted, along with other characters like lumberjacks or fishermen, uh, like they're just, you know, common clod-hopping dirt farmers, when really you have to be an expert and know what you're talking about to do that job for any length of time. So I, I, I appreciate this, this characterization. After a while, things got back to normal. This layer of salt was covered with layers of rock. And someone found the salt and decided to dig it out. The burrow turned his long ears toward the miner, looking as if he understood every word. Salt mining is a lot easier than gold mining, that much I'll tell you right off. And the caves are beautiful. The way the light filters through the crystals makes you feel like you're standing inside a white and blue glacier. Okay. I mean, I love that description. Uh... Really, there's nothing else. Ooh, hey, now. Have you got... Okay, good. He does have the yellow ring on. Ooh, another bead puzzle. Okay. Ooh, boy. Oh, okay. This one's already making my eyes all swimmy. Um... Okay, we need five yellow. There's yellow all over the place. These keys are green, I'm guessing. Red, 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 blue. Okay, five red, and we need to get to five yellow. Oh, boy. How are we going to do that? Um, well, we've got to start by getting rid of some of these red beads. Okay, so we can do one, two, or three. I'm going to start with one. And let me think, because I don't want to get too far ahead of myself. These always take a lot of brain juice, but uh, this one, I'm not going to lie, this is for some reason, maybe because of the sheer number of beads... And just, this all looks very complicated. It's kind of intimidating. Um, okay, so... If I drop two more... Then I'll have a white and a yellow. So if I drop... Let's see... A, blue and a yellow two green that'll get us a red back I don't think that's it if I did two yellows and a green well gonna have to like this is gonna come into the equation okay wait let me let me get rid of these reds first that gives us a blue and a white if I drop two white that is too much blue so how can I turn some of this blue into yellow a blue and a green but then I'll be stuck with two blue okay I I've already screwed up let me let me think about this uh, okay I think I was on the right track by dropping one red first. Okay. Then... Let's see. I did two red. 
reds, and that gave me a blue and a white, or three reds. So if I did that, then I would have two blues. And two blues, yellow, and green would give me two whites. And I could get rid of the last red. Okay, let me... So if I do this... green and a yellow will give me two white. Okay. And then if I drop a red that gives me this and then if I drop a green and a white, that'll give me a green and two yellows. Or I mean a yellow and a blue and a red, okay. So then... Yes. Yes, okay. Good. I second guess myself. <gasps> That's another Ever Edge. What? What? Holy shit. There are two of these? No way. Oh, I mean, well, we have to take it. Uh. Oh my goodness. Okay, so see, this is great because the Onyx Blade, look at that, you know, 14, 19, 23, etc. This starts out at 5, 30, 35, 40, 35, 45, so it's bad at thrusting, but it's great at everything else, and you can use it to hack for maximum damage. So there is no reason... Um, there is no reason to have the Onyx Blade anymore if, if you can have two Ever Edges. There's just, it doesn't matter. It's just not necessary. So, oh, come on. Uh, here, hold this while we switch things around. Okay, so, now it still needs to be blessed, because the Onyx Blade is blessed. And that is going to be important, because, of course, you see here, 5, 30, 35, 40, 5, 34, 40, 46, 40, 51, right? So, we do need to go to a Temple of Core, but we have plenty of money for that, and we know where a Temple of Core is. And now, we never need whetstones again, so it doesn't matter that we can't find any. Holy shit, I'm gonna save the crap out of that. And we have a shop. Please be a weapon shop. Parnu's House of Mystery. Hmm, a house of mystery, you say? What do you sell? Hey, fire staffs. Winter staffs. I wonder if he would buy that winter staff. Almost certainly not. Got some new books. And he sells a ring of the ranger. Cool. Don't need that, but... My god, 6,500 burlas for five dervish discs. Can you imagine if they sold for that much? Holy crap. Will he buy this Carluta's chain? No, of course he won't. Okay, well, that means he probably won't buy that winter staff either, so I might as well not go all the way back and get it. Especially, look at that 3,000 burlas. The last time we came across a magic shop, it was way cheaper than that. Although, to be fair, 
they were selling like the kinetic staves and stuff and they were not selling fire staves and winter staves so i love that the fire staff has the fire enchantment like it deals fire damage uh but the winter staff doesn't have the the frosted enchantment for some reason hmm. okay constitutional study i'm betting that increases strength magic a field guide to irrigation and farming that might be foraging muscles and glands i am pretty sure we have already read and weather patterns of ramar i know we have because that's the one that gave us a bonus to electricity magic so i'm gonna save it so that i don't waste our money and then i'm gonna buy a copy of muscles and glands Yep, okay. So I thought that was like a bonus to strength magic or something anyway. Alright, so constitutional study we do need. And this one, presumably because we've never seen it before. So let's see what it does. Since this is a magical book, it probably only has any benefit for him. Let's double check his stats, just in case. Everybody has uh, leveled up a little bit. Her stealth's gone up. Great. Ooh, his touch is at 60 now. I wonder if that means that maybe we've unlocked something. Strength is almost at 60. No, not yet. Okay. Let's see if this boosts it. Let's get over the hump. Okay, Aaron read the book with interest. The author's insights on the nature of the body and how magic can interact with it gave Aaron much to think about. Ooh. Plus five to damage because of physical harm or injury. Wow. Okay. Not what I thought that would be at all. And field guide to irrigation and farming. Aaron wasn't particularly interested in farming, but one section of the book caught his eye. The mystic symbols and descriptions intended for itinerant rural mages gave Aaron unexpected ideas about the moisture in the land and air around him. Oh, did that boost his water magic? It did. Wild. Plus five to water magic. Huh. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do, actually. I'm going to buy those books, and then I'm not going to use them right away. And here's the reason why. Because our skill cap for this chapter is 90, right? So his, his magic increases all the time as he's using it. So if we can get to 90 with damage and water and then use those, it will bump him over to 95. So he will go over the maximum for this chapter. And then in the next chapter, if the maximum is 100, he'll be that much closer. Versus if I use them now, it'll just take him to 88 and 85 respectively. And then he'll hit that 90 cap. So he will have further to go in the next chapter. So he'll just hang on to those books. And anything over here? No? Okay, then let's... Is the... Oh, there's the door. Anyone of interest? Literally just the barmaid. Course kitchen. Okay. Not gonna lie, I could go for a good meat pie right now, but... Okay, any more treasure chests hereabouts? Okay, well there's the other end of town. Anything over here? No. I have to kind of stick my head in because the tree sprites 
are a little closer together. It's like I said in the last stream, I find myself like kind of leaning to look around them, which is foolishness, but... Okay, there's no way I was going to get stealth on those terrain. Alright. Archery practice again. <sighs> Two for two. Uh, you know, since he only has magic ammunition, I'm kind of loath to do that. Um, I'm just going to go over here and make sure that they don't hurt Aaron. <laughs> Donkey Kong looking ass. Get out of here. Let's see, can we hit this one over here with a hot foot? We can. And we will. Nice. Two Ever Edges is gonna make a big difference. I can already tell. Man, that is wild. I cannot believe we found a second Ever Edge. Because when something has a name like that, um, you don't think of it as a type. You think of it as a unique weapon. And I just... That's, that's wild, because now I have to think of it as... Uh, it's not Ever Edge, the, the sword Ever Edge. It is an Ever Edge. Just like you would have a long sword, or a broad sword, or a rapier. A rapier. There we go. Now, these things are good for target practice if they're good for nothing else. <laughs> wow, it had one hit point and he killed it. Love it. Love to see it. We're gonna get one more shot in, Kaylin. That's my girl. And they're carrying nothing. Unsurprisingly. Cool. Okay, his melee. Oh, his spell accuracy did go up. Nice. Closing in on 70. And her archery went up to 69. Nice. What is her bow's durability at? 79. Okay, she's still hitting, so I'm going to leave it. Because I want to get the most out of that bowstring, and it's going to have a greater value the worse shape that that bow is in. I'm guessing that restringing a bow versus using beeswax to repair it probably does not actually increase your repair skill. I don't know that, because we've only used a bowstring like one time, I think, and I don't believe that it boosted our repair skill, but since it increases it to 100... Shh. Listen. Oh. I thought I heard pebbles falling, like someone missed his footing. Since it just sets it back to 100 regardless of durability, I'm guessing that it doesn't count. Okay. Ooh. Alright, mercenary archer, mercenary archer, mercenary, mercenary. Well, we know what we're doing here. Have some Ever Edge. Armor Light. William, can you get to that guy, please? Whew. That looked like a corrosive or flaming arrow, maybe. Oh, he's not going to be able to get to him now, dang it. But yeah, that looked like some sort of magic arrow, so... Hmm, what are we going to do here? Let's go with... Adrenaline on Kaelin. William's skills are higher, but that extra turn that she gets every round really makes the difference. Oh, yep, that is a magic arrow. Okay, we're gonna have to burn some sin water. 
Meanwhile, you go up here, lock down that archer. Phew, we. Uh, let's do 15. There we go. I'm always afraid that I'm going to, um, like, use too much. Oh, nice. It hit exactly the person I wanted to hit. You love to see it. Okay, go up there and hopefully finish him off, maybe? No, not quite. Okay. Fair enough. That one's down, though. Let's practice some melee. If Kalen distracts this guy and turns him around, we might be able to get off a hot foot. If we can get off at least one... Chances are that his skill will go up, especially since he hit. Alright, that tower shield really coming in clutch. Nice. Other archers down. Ooh, his shield works also, though. It's kind of BS that their shields work the same as ours do doesn't hardly seem fair when we're the protagonists. Don't these guys know that they're like they're going to meet inevitable defeat anyway? They're meant to be defeated. They you exist only for us to destroy you. Your purpose in life is to die on our blades. You are just fuel. Fuel for the protagonist fire. And I tell you what, it's a good thing that shields can't block spells. Sometimes the shield procs so often that I feel like that's the only way you're going to kill the guy. Whew. Okay. Oh my gosh, one of them had a, a spooky chicken stick. Hello, spooky chicken stick. <gasps> what is that? What is that? That's a new type of bow. What kind of bow is it? Get my inventory fish. Uh, let's see. These are just regular arrows. These are flaming arrows. These are flaming arrows. That doesn't work. There are now 25 flaming arrows. Okay. Oh, I see. Let me just... There, that makes more sense, question mark? Okay, what's this? Speed bow. As William gripped the bizarre composite bow and thought of firing a test shot, test show it says, but I'm sure they mean test shot, an arrow instantly appeared knocked and ready. Stunned at the enchantment, William realized that eliminating the need to find and grab a new arrow made it possible to shoot twice as quickly. Oh boy, that's it. I was not expecting to find one on these bandits, though. Holy hell. Okay, well, it's at 75. We gotta use a bowstring on this, then. Accuracy mod, plus 5. Damage mod, plus 5. Okay, so accuracy and damage is actually less than the Grolf bow, but you shoot twice. I, f I feel like that's probably better. Uh, because I'm really loving the accuracy and the damage bonus, because that does make a difference. Uh, but if your accuracy is already high enough, like if your archery skill is, is decent, as hers is, because she's got her... Her archery is better than his spell accuracy. Oh, man. Oh, man, that's good. Uh, okay. Well, that's a save. And... Oh. Not what I meant to do. Here we go. We 
we may come up with some place to sell the rest of that crap, but for now we're okay. For now we're doing all right. I am going to keep the Grulf bow on Kaylin for a little while longer. I'm going to try and boost her archery skill a bit more. But now that we have a speed bow, and since we found some on some random bandits, unless that's the only one, and that's like the speed bow that y'all were telling me about in chat, I'm assuming that it's like Everedge, where it's a type of bow, and we might find one for William too. Now I don't know how much good it will do him, because his archery skill is like 24. But, uh... I'm going to let her archery skill level up just a little bit more. And then switch to the speed bow. Because he's not really an archer. And except on surprise rounds when we're just getting in a bonus shot, which is it's just gravy, then he's, he's not an archer. He's got to tank. Because we cannot have um, everyone shooting all the time because the enemy is going to keep trying to close with us. So if we stand there and do nothing but shoot arrows the whole time, then like eventually they are going to close with us. So someone has to run interference. And uh, that someone has to be William because Kalen is definitely faster than him, uh, but he's tougher. And nobody's going to argue that. She can definitely, she can take a hit, but he is tougher. Oh, is that one running? Hmm. Interesting. I'm going to deliberately attack different targets here to try and prolong the uh, amount of... I almost said suffering. I can dish out <laughs> the amount of shots I can get. Let's see here. Can't shoot that one. Can't shoot that one. Can't shoot any of those. Okay, well... Melee practice it is, then. There we go, that one's down. I think this one only has a few hit points, so Aaron might actually be able to take it out. If he could hit. These things look like... They're like, like wolves or something. But... That Trakaw talked about a stampede killing a guy... And that's just, that's really odd. That's not what I would associate with these creatures. I feel like it would take a lot of them to stampede me to death. Can you hit from there, sweetheart? Oh, you can. All right. Dang, she's good. She's so good. I have to check them because we found that, like, fatty meat on one of them, so. Okay, skill check. His defense went up. Her archery is now 70. Awesome. I think I'm going to try and get it to, to 80 at least. Um, and then I will switch over to the speed bow. Maybe 75. We'll see. Uh, because I'm going to be using uh, losing a lot of accuracy from the Grulf bow. Which is almost at 70%. When it gets to 70, I'll probably use a bowstring on it. Okay, let's see here. Ooh, large unlocked normal chest that appears to be trapped. Okay, so you will need that. But first, let's double check our armor here. Oh, that one's still at 100%. Fine. Give that to him. Okay. What's behind door number one? Ooh, first try. Huh. 
A diamond shield stone. Cool. We've not used a shield stone yet. I don't begrudge the game giving them to me. Just, we haven't used them. Let's see. Okay, that's going to go down to Nathby. They mentioned checking in Nathby. And we haven't seen Balooker, Balooker, whatever, and Night Ridge yet, plus the Temple of Kor, where we can bless the other Everedge, is like over here, which means we need to circle back around anyway. So, I'm not going to go down to Nathby. I'm going to go up north. We're going to follow the road this way. The game hasn't been exactly uh, stingy with the treasure chests in this part of our adventure today, which is frankly awesome. I love that. The the bead puzzles, the lever puzzles, all of those are really cool, but also, I mean, there's a, a specific thrill that you get from just picking a simple lock as well. Which is great, you know, just disarming a trap or something. More target practice. Love it. Oh, she missed for the first time. Maybe it is, in fact, time to uh, repair that bow, then. That's her first miss in a long time, I think. Uh, yeah, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna go hit this one. <laughs> see if we can finish that one off, maybe. Nice. Very nice. And you remember, this is the wounded one. Oh, well, it made itself easy to follow. Okay. Let's see. What kind of touch spells do we have? Deep freeze, combust. We do need to raise our ice magic. A shove. Dehydrate. I'm going to use a dehydrate because uh, we are not doing anything else that's going to raise our water magic, and that's one of the ones that I want to try and get to 90 if possible. Ow. Take that one down. Really? This should finish it off then. Ooh, right in the butt. Huh. It defended. Okay. Can you hit from there? You can try. Ooh. That sailed right past uh, William's important bits. It's a good thing you're a good shot, Kaylin. Especially after that miss last time. Okay, now she can't hit anymore, so... Now just go over and hit them with melee. Put that new Everedge to use. Nice! Oh, he got the kill shot. Cool. Nothing. Wow, nobody got any skill gains from that? No, his melee went up. Spell accuracy went up. That's good, that's good. Remove is at 83. Self and allies at 84. Magic is at 64. Poison finally hit 40. Strength is at 59. I really want to get that to 60. I, I, My gut tells me that there is a new spell locked behind 60 strength magic. Ooh, and we've got a new spell here too with poison. 
Look at this. There's a bunch lit up. Self and ally area. Create, remove, resist. Okay, so let's see. Poison. Self ally. Remove. That makes purification. Or resist, which makes metabolic stasis. Create an area. Choking cloud. Okay, so we've got three different spells, but they are all poison spells. So very suddenly, um, getting to 40 ranks in poison just opened a, a floodgate. Um, I think let's go with metabolic stasis. I'm pretty sure I know what that means. I bet that that makes you immune to poison. I bet that that's what it does, but let's try it and see. I'm going to guess that that's kind of like the poison version of, um, like, Winter's Kiss and, and so on. Let's see, is there, is there an inn? Is that an inn? No. I guess not. Well, darn it. Oh. Okay, now let's take a look at this town in the light. Oh, that's just a shop. Okay, so they don't have an inn because they have a tavern. Great. And once again, there appears to be no one interesting here, although... Ooh, mm, that looks good. I must be hungry, y'all. I must be. Ooh. And there's some more of that fatty meat, which we have here. Now, y'all told me to hang on to this, that it was going to be important. So, now we find it to buy. I'm wondering, like, how's that going to turn up important? I'm very interested to see where that goes. Let's see what's in this shop. Barlun's Mercantile. Oh, we can talk to that guy. We can talk to this person as well. Okay. Talk to the shopkeep first, and there we go. We can finally buy whetstones. We've got shovels, hardening fluid, talicor dust, oil. Look at all of this. Bowstrings. And for not too much money, either, actually. Um, hmm. I am, in fact, going to buy some beeswax, because it's not super expensive. Shovels. We're going to keep the shovels we've got. Okay, and he'll give us money for this onyx blade. Might as well. Okay, we're hanging on to those. We have a bunch of torches. Uh, let me... Let's give... Okay, that should be the full stack. Let's sell these other torches. Because we do not need them. Almost forgot we probably should repair our armor, though. There we go. Okay. Cool. Ugh, I hate that noise. I hate it so much. Um, cool. And we can come back and buy that again if we need to for 709 burlas, which we shouldn't. Now, if you're not the shopkeep, what do you have to say? Oh, good day. Good day. Welcome to Marlin's Mercantile. How may I be of service? That's Andrew Thatcher again. That has to be. How can you be of service? Apparently you can't. So we're going to have to come back and talk to him and like give him something, or we need to hear something else from another character first so that we gain a conversation topic, it looks like. Fair enough. Okay, uh, let's see. problem here is that we need room for all of these bows and arrows and things. Here we go. Because they do not hot swap the way the other ones do. 73. Not bad. Uh, you know what, though? Actually... Screw that. 
There, she's the one that needs it anyway. Okay. Take all that stuff back. There we go. Excellent. Okay, that's north. I lost my bearings there for a moment. Okay, let's hit this house at the intersection, and then we'll do the southern end first, and then go north. The party looked in through the open door. A group of men sat at the table involved in a game of cards. The man at the far end looked up and invited them in, and a fat man laughed. More fish for you to scale, Jax. I think we'll just watch for a bit first, William answered jovially. After all, we need a chance to find your tells. The men laughed at that and resumed their play. The tide of the game was quickly apparent as much of the money was pulled towards the enigmatic gentleman at the end of the table. When the players finally called a break, Aaron pulled the winner aside. You're cheating, he said flatly. I can sense the magic. You're making your hands move faster than the others can see, probably pulling cards from hidden places. The enigmatic man was nonplussed, and so am I. So, what are you going to do about it? Aaron waved his hands dismissively. Nothing, as long as you teach me how to do it. Ha-ha! <laughs> the man laughed. <laughs> Tell you what, you beat me at cards, I'll give you a lesson. He smiled, pointing to the pile of coins at his seat. The stake will be 300 burlas a hand. If you can clean me out, you'll have more than earned it. And yes, I'll play fair. Shall we play? Mm, not right now. But, uh, we'll come back to that. Because that feels like something where, like, I don't know what our gambling skill is. 38 is the highest gambling skill. Which means I may have to load it a couple of times and save scum that in order to get the skill boost. So I may do that in between episodes. The party saw a man and a woman sitting under a tree holding hands. Yes, that's why we clicked on the front door of this building to go up under a tree. Greetings, William called out and the couple stood to meet them. Oh, travelers, welcome to Balukrit. Kaylin brushed the dust off her shirt. It's not difficult to tell we've been on the road, is it? We were wondering if you had any food or goods to sell. The man glanced at his wife, then replied, Well, yes, I have a service I provide. Hmm. What interesting ellipses. No, Tibor, don't. It always takes so much out of you. The woman laid her hand on, the, on his arm, and Tibor gently removed it. Cecilia, I have to ply my trade if I'm to earn enough to keep you out of the brothel. Don't worry. I'll be all right. Hmm, keep her out of the brothel, sure. William was intrigued. What is it that you do? Though I'm not a mage, I, I can channel magic. If you have a magical staff, I can recharge it for 500 burlas. Oh, here we go. Does this harm you? Tibor put his arm around Cecilia's shoulder. No, but it's very tiring. Just recharging one item alone will necessitate many days of rest, but that is my gift, so that is what I do. I think if I were you, I'd look for another line of work, Kaylin said. Okay, cool. I am going to mark that down. Because that's been a long time in coming, and our kinetic staff could use a recharge, but we haven't been using it because I didn't know when or if we would find someone who could recharge it. So, now we know that that's available, I can, uh, I can use it a little bit more. Ah, the old man sat in a chair on the front porch soaking up rays from the sun. A manservant stood by his side, occasionally reaching over to adjust the lap robe. The party approached. My lord, some visitors to see you, the servant shouted. Oh, I'm sorry, okay. My lord, some visitors to see you. He cupped his hand to the gentleman's good ear. The old man turned bleary eyes in William's direction. Petitioners, no doubt, he quavered. Christopher, I'm afraid you'll have to tell them I can't help them. Nor will talking to my son do them a lick of good. The damn fool wastes his education and his opportunities. 
preferring to spend his days in the company of whores and gamblers. William spoke loudly. Uh, are you a Jaeger, my lord? The man looked puzzled until the servant shouted the question several times. Oh, yes, I'm a Jaeger. Our line goes back to long before the Empire. My ancestors marched with the first Emperor Valorian when he took the Piandan Peninsula. They fought side by side in Ambra and Quivain. The old man broke off, coughing, and the servant rushed to help him swallow a spoonful of viscous liquid poured from a large bottle. <laughs> where, where was I? The Jaeger continued querulously. Oh, yes, <laughs> nothing is the way it used to be. Corruption, greed, scandals. The Shiras are worst, of course, but even the Jaegers they should be above such things. Jaeger started to get worked up again, and the servant waved the party off with his hand, then whispered to calm the old man. Nodding off into a light doze, the Jaeger murmured, Merots, invading, pirates, strikes, and a worthless son to boot. I won't be around long enough to see much more of this, thank core. Ah, oh, it longs for the good old days. Hmm... Thing back there. So, what's this house? Oh! Uh. Hmm. Um. Well, I wasn't expecting this. When Tibor mentioned keeping Cecilia out of the brothel, I thought he meant in like. broader terms, like as a concept. Like. If he didn't make enough money, that's probably where she would have to go and work, because that's where her skills lay. Uh, no pun intended. I didn't think it indicated that there was actually going to be a, uh, 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 uh an establishment of illicit pleasures here in the town. Well? Hello, pretty. What's your name? My name is Misha, but a man as handsome as you might call me anything he likes. Do you and your friends want a party? Oh my. Um, and again, we can't really say anything, which means presumably we're supposed to offer her something. And the only thing I can think of that we might offer her would be cash. So, hmm. Hmm. Um I'm just going to I'm just going to dodge this for now. Come back any time. The door is always open to fine folk like yourselves. Take care of yourself, Misha. In your line of work, no one else will. Bless Kaylin. Okay. So um Man I don't know, something's gonna go down there, presumably. Uh, maybe William, but, uh, I don't know. We'll have to see if there's, like, a quest that takes us there or what. Ooh, okay, another empty house with a banded shield and a rapier. Well, we don't need, uh, either of those things. So I will just make a note... And let's see, this is, that's the tavern. That's the gambling guy. So this should just be, this should be the last place that we need to visit, I think. A young man gambled with several Montari. Oh, okay. So I don't know, like... Baluker, I'm not sure, like, the the B-E part of the pun, but this is several different puns. This is like a gambling town with the, you know, like a pleasure town, because you've got two gambling houses, uh, you've got that tavern, you've got the, um, uh, you've got the brothel, and, of course, lucre, like L-U-C-R-E, is another word for money, and also it's spelled funny here, so it's L-U-C-K, luck. So they're combining fortune and money and whatever. The Bell, Belluck, Belluker, I'm, I'm not sure what that would be, but pro presumably another word in there as well. So now I get it. 
Uh, the companions watched long enough to determine that the human was losing badly. The Montari cleaned him out, but he tried to prolong the play with vouchers. Don't you know who I am? My word is worth thousands, he cried in a drunken rage. The gold Montari stood, followed by the two greys. Mm, we don't play for paper, he said. You'll play for paper with me, the young man lunged forward. The Montari leader sidestepped neatly as the man fell on his face. Oh, uh, five will get you ten that this is the, uh, the worthless son. Yeah, a town full of gamers. <laughs> Uh, the Montari sniffed derisively, brushing past the companions on their way out the door. Aaron bent to help the man up, but a string of drunken curses and a stiff arm in the ribs convinced him to leave the man be. Okay. Hmm. That didn't generate an NPC outside or anything, so... Okay. Well, um, I think that having explored Belucker, Belucker, whatever... Uh, this is a good place to leave it. Man, this has been a good one. We found a second Everedge. We found a speed bow. Uh, this is going really well. And so when we come back next time, which of course that's going to be Saturday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is New York and Miami time here in the U.S., that just leaves the road between here and Night Ridge. Uh, and then I'm going to loop back around and get the other Everedge blessed at the Temple of Kor. And then we just have to go south to Nathby. And I'm guessing that hole in the mountain over next to Havsley is probably the salt mines, maybe? And we might need to go in there for a quest or something, but whatever it is, we're going to find out either in Night Ridge or Nathby, because those are the only two towns in Genuli we haven't been, and Nathby is the one that they said by name at the beginning. Why we landed in Breland when Nathby was right there, I don't know, but whatever. We'll get there next time. So, um... I am going to try and grab the magic skill from this gambler here in between now and our next stream. And otherwise, I will leave it at that, and we'll have plenty of exploring to do when we come back next time. So don't forget to follow and subscribe on Twitch if you haven't already. And if you're watching the YouTube VOD, then uh, you can follow and turn on notifications here as well. And there's a whole playlist in case you missed any previous episodes. This has been a great playthrough, and I'm so glad that y'all chose this to be my first blind Let's Play here on the channel. Uh, I'm having so much fun, and I feel like we're drawing towards the end, so you don't want to miss it, which means make sure to follow over on Twitter and Facebook as well. You can comment on the video or, you know, DM me. I love to hear your comments. And don't forget to stop by on Monday for Chrono Cross or on Thursday for Disciples 2 as well. And uh, for whichever stream, I will see you next time. And until then, as always, thanks for playing.